Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Thank you guys for being here. I hope you guys are doing well. In today's video, we'll talk about that recently passed divorce bill in the Philippines. So the Philippines House of Representatives passed a bill to legalize divorce in the country. They did that on May 22 this year, and that bill will now go to Senate in August and will require presidential assent to become law now. When it comes to the topic of divorce, I have already shared my personal views and opinions on this topic. If you're interested in watching that video, I'm going to go ahead and share that in my description below. All right, someone asked me this question. How come divorce is still illegal in the Philippines when it's widely accepted everywhere else in the world? If I'm not mistaken, it's illegal in two places in the world, the Philippines and the Vatican. Now, it is illegal in the Philippines, and I think it might remain to be that way. It really depends on what happens to this bill, but again, to answer that question... It has to do with the religious composition of the population and the outsized role that religious institutions play in influencing views on social issues. I mentioned before the majority of Filipinos are Catholic. They account for about 78.8% of the household population, which is amongst the highest in the world in terms of percentage. Now, with that, you would notice that majority of Filipino politicians, lawmakers, and Filipinos working for the governments are, government are mostly Catholics. So there is supposed to be a separation between the church and the state. But, I mean, in some extent, there is a separation. But... It's undeniable that the Catholic Church has a very big influence when it comes to Filipino, the Philippine politics and government. And even up to this day in modern Philippines, you know, politicians, the church, and much of the population strongly backed a ban on divorce. Now, I do want to mention this because I've noticed this. There is a slight decline when it comes to Catholicism in the Philippines. And with that, you would also notice a slight decline when it comes to the influence of the Catholic Church in the country. However, there is an offset because there's also a growing population of other traditional Christians in the Philippines, mostly Protestants. And with this, you would notice an offset when it comes to the growing importance and influence of this various Protestant churches, some other religious churches. Now, I'm going to mention two churches that are very, very influential in the Philippines. So the first one is Iglesia Ni Cristo. This is the Church of Christ in the Philippines. Now, they have a lot of members. They are very influential in the Philippines, politics and the society. And one thing I'm going to mention is that this church has a very distinct architecture. Um, when you see their temple, because they call their churches Templo, they're very beautiful. They have a very distinct, very unique architecture. And I have to mention that because I've always had an appreciation for how beautiful those Catholic churches are. And this church is not that far there. They have very beautiful churches. Anyways, moving on before I get lost. Okay. Another church is very influential in the Philippines um, is El Shaddai. Now, El Shaddai is not a Protestant church. They are actually the biggest Catholic charismatic group in the Philippines. They have a lot of members and they are also very influential in Philippine politics. That's why during election times, if you are a politician and if you get the endorsement of these churches, these religious groups, your likelihood of winning is very high because again, they have a lot of members and they are very influential. And these groups, excuse me, they also hold strong views against divorce, abortion and same-sex marriage and that's why this is going to be the major reason why it's going to be very hard to legalize divorce in the country now this is the challenge because the reality is marriage marriages doesn't always work and this is what you see in the philippines you know a lot of couples do end up separating and the absence of divorce is not stopping people from moving on you know they do end up finding new partners and then because divorce is not allowed in the country, a lot of people end up shacking up. They cohabitate with their new partners. And this can get very complicated and dangerous because in the Philippines, adultery and concubinage are illegal and are considered crimes against chastity. Now, I see cases of this with Filipinas involved with foreigners, you know. They have already moved on, but then their ex-Filipino husband. I'm not sure if you can consider that ex because technically you're still legally married. But yes, their Filipino husband wants to reconcile. But, you know, the Filipinos already moved on with a foreigner. But it's complicated because, again, these are considered illegal in the Philippines. And if you get caught doing that, you can go to jail. And um, 
as I mentioned, again, it's very complicated because of that situation. Now, for women committing that, the husband can file, committing that crime, the husband can file adultery. And if it's the other way around, uh, the wife can file concubinage. So, yes, that's what happens. A lot of times I notice that initially that is, it works for some couple because they just, they're both, they both have found new partners. And they would just do some sort of a verbal agreement like, I'm moving on with my life you move on with your life and then sometimes it gets complicated when the husband or the wife it depends on the situation um you know their second relationship doesn't work you know they break up with that other partner and then now they want to reconcile with the partner that technically already has moved on so it can get very complicated now since divorce is not allowed in the philippines um, there is two way. There are two ways to like separate. Um, there is legal separation and annulment. Now, with legal separation, most Filipinos don't want this because you are legally separated, but you are not really. You're technically still married. You know, you're just legally separated. You can legally live apart, live apart, but you are still legally married. So you cannot remarry. You cannot marry a new another person so for most filipinos i mean what's the point because a lot of people do end up finding enough i mean sometimes that's even the reason of the breakup to begin with so for a lot of filipinos they don't want legal separation now most filipinos prefer annulment the problem with annulment is that it's very complicated because annulment in the philippines with that basically the marriage is declared void as though it never happened and you're gonna have to meet certain grounds for that annulment to be granted so it can be a very long process it's very expensive and a lot of filipinos think this is only for the rich because i mean technically the reality is only the rich can afford it i believe right now it costs at least three thousand dollars a hundred to hundred and fifty thousand pesos to file it so i mean if you are a common filipino you're not making that kind of money you're gonna be stuck in that kind of situation you know it's that's why a lot of Filipino are wanting to legalize, are in favor of legalizing divorce in the Philippines. Now, so what does this bill proposes? The bill stipulates the ground for divorce, absolute divorce, which includes psychological incapacity, irreconcilable differences, domestic or marital abuse, and etc. Now, a lot of people in the Philippines um, don't like this one specific ground, irreconcilable differences, because this is basically like a catch-all for everything like here in the u.s you know a lot of filipinos think that's not good because that's gonna make it so easy to get a divorce and going back to this bill the proposed bill the petitioners can approach a family court which will give a mandatory 60-day cooling off period in certain cases if there is a scope for reconciliation now that's actually very nice the 60-day cooling of period i think that's very similar to what south korea does i'm not sure how long the cooling of period is but you know that's a good amount of time to maybe consider reconciliation i'm sure the elders in the filipino families would like that one okay if the petition goes ahead so if the couple doesn't get into that reconciliation it must be decided within the year so it's still not going to be as easy to get this because it's going to take a little bit more time. All right. The decree of absolute divorce shall have the effect of judicial dissolution of a marriage where the divorced spouses return to their status of being single with the right to contract marriage again. This is according to the Philippine News Agency. Now, there's a lot of, there's a lot of debates on this one because some people were saying that, you know, the Philippines can make history this time around because... Actually, a similar bill was passed in 2018, but then the moment it got to Senate, that's that's where it stopped. You know, it it faced a lot of opposition, and I think this one, this bill, will also face a lot of opposition. Now, some people are saying the Philippines could make history. They probably are. You know, some people are saying, oh, Philippines is closer to, you know, legalizing divorce because this time around, some local surveys have shown about half the population to be accepting of divorce. That's a higher percentage than, you know, from 2018, obviously. And the current president of the Philippines, Bongbong Marcos, has extended his qualified support for divorce. He said this on his 2022 presidential campaign. He said that there are cases where the marriage can't really be worked out. He said this, but let's not 
be like other places where getting a divorce is, is so easy. So I think majority of Filipinos do agree with the fact that they want to legalize divorce because in some families, you know, it can be really complicated. And, you know, you also have, at least I'd say to be safe, two to three generations of families who went through this, who are still in this situation, stuck in this, I'd say, marriages, which is sad to say. But, you know, a lot of people that have been separated for decades, but still are legally, like, tied. And you also have a generation two to three generation of children who are now adults growing up in this broken families. And for a lot of these children that's now adult, they, they say, and what's the point of not having a divorce? I mean, people, you know, our parents separated anyways. They moved on with new partners, you know. That's the reason why Filipinos are more open to the idea of divorce. Now, will Philippines, is Philippines closer to legalizing divorce? Maybe, maybe not. Again, there is going to be, a big opposition in this one because again the philippines remains to be a majority catholic country and someone asked me this question which i thought was very interesting he said um i mean how come Philippine, filipino catholics are so opposed with divorce when catholics all over <laughs> in other places like europe and here in the u.s you know are accepting of divorce um, the case of the Philippines is quite unique, I'd say, because it's not just, I mean, Catholicism is embedded in the Filipino culture. Again, the Philippines has been com colonized by Spain for, what, 300 years, so that's really embedded into all culture. It's, but it's not just really religion. I think the society in general look down upon those who don't, hmm, look down upon those who break their marital vows, and there's always that stigma, I would say. Not just the couple who's who decided to separate or to break the marriage vow but even the children so it's been like that in the country it's not just religion it's just it's culture in general you know people still think of divorce as taboo so it's going to be hard to legalize this divorce um, but I do think it's inevitable I think sooner or later it's going to happen so if you have any more um, comments on this you're more than welcome to do that in my comment section below. I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye, everyone.